What's going on guys? It's your boy Nick coming at you with a brand new FA Metaphors deck profile for the post Burst of Destiny format. For those of you that are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Nick. Um, I upload deck profiles, discussion videos, and also some live duel videos on my channel. Uh, so if that's something that you think you're, you'd be interested in, feel free to subscribe and drop a like on this video. Um, for those of you who don't know, FA is my personal favorite deck of all time. I've been piloting this deck exclusively for the better half of two, three years now. Uh, I've tested various versions of this deck um, through different formats, and I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm the world's greatest Yu-Gi-Oh player, nor am I going to say that um, I'm the best deck builder. However, when it comes to FA specifically, I feel that based on the amount of time I've invested in this deck in terms of testing and, and playing it through different formats, I do feel that I have a lot of knowledge and I think I know a little bit about what I'm talking about when it comes to this deck specifically. Um, you can play the deck pure, however, despite the deck being race car themed, it's actually quite slow in its pure form, which is a bit ironic. Um, so I use the Metaphors cards as a supporting engine to help speed the deck up and increase the deck's overall consistency, which you'll kind of see how that works out as we go through the profile. Um, but with that being said, uh, feel free to drop a like on the video. I know I've teased this video for quite a bit of time now, and it's taken me a bit to kind of acquire the cards I was waiting for. Um, I'm also actually recently getting over, a, the, I had the flu. Um, I'm okay, It's not. I wasn't COVID, I did go get tested, but I, I'm alright. Um, so I actually haven't had a chance to test this deck at an in-person event, uh, but I have been testing it quite a bit online. And so far I'm actually really, really happy with the build. So. Uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right in so you guys can see the spice that I brought to you today. Um, but let's go ahead and start off with the main deck. As usual, we're going to be running triple copies of FA Auto Navigator. This is your main starter and your extender within the theme. Uh, she is a tuner. On summon, she searches an FA field spell from the deck to your hand. She can also modulate her level. She does it, everything you need her to do. This, No matter what variant of FA you want to play, you will always run triple copies of Auto Navigator. No questions asked as far as that's concerned. She is an absolute must at three. Uh, moving on, we're on triple copies of FA Hang On Mach, who in my opinion is the second best main deck FA monster behind Auto Navigator. Uh, the reason for this is because I think he has the best uh, effect out of all the other main deck FAs. Um, he gains 300 attack times his own level. Each time an FA spell or spell effects, or, or trap, but well, uh, um, we're not playing any FA traps because they're all not very good. Um, but each time an FA spell uh, or spell effects activated, um, he gains one level. Now that is not once per turn, so as many times as you can activate spells, he gains a level for each, or spell effects as well. Um, also, uh, he's unaffected by monsters whose level or rank is lower than his. So as he's increasing levels, he's actually becoming immune to any monsters um, who are whose levels or ranks are less than his, which is pretty cool. And as an added benefit, once he reaches level 7 or higher, um, he becomes a one-sided Bark Law uh, for the opponent. And basically what that means is that any card sent to the opponent's graveyard is banished instead, which is a pretty damn good Floodgate effect, if you ask me. There's a lot of decks that actually struggle to play through something like that. Uh, think a deck like Phantom Knight, for example. I don't think there's a lot of ways Phantom Knight can play through a one-sided, uh, you know, banishing of all their cards being sent to Grave. So, you can kind of see how against certain matchups, Hang On Mach actually becomes quite a bit of a blowout. Uh, think Sky Striker as well, or even Eldritch, for example. You know, those are all decks that all play out the graveyard, and they do not want their cards banished under any circumstance. So, if you can establish a card like Hang On Mach, it's actually a nightmare for those types of decks to deal with, but... Triple copies of Hang On Mach. He's just uh, probably the best non-tuner FA monster. And then we follow that up with one copy of FA Dark Dragster. You just play one of this. You don't really need to play multiple. Um, you search it when you need it. He can um, special summon himself if you control an FA who's level 7 or higher. And then he can also uh, re target any card in the field, reduce his level by 3, uh, to then destroy that card. Um, so he's pretty cool overall, but just one copy is all you need. No more than that. And that actually wraps up the main deck FA monster lineup. Um, we're actually going to be jumping into the Metaphos monster lineup right now. And you'll kind of get to see why we decided to go with Metaphos as this deck's supplementary engine. 
Uh, so we're on triple copies of Rare Metaphors Bismagir. Uh, Bismagir is great. Just, uh, again, having a high scale. Um, her pendulum effect is actually shared amongst all of the other main deck uh, Metaphors monsters. And that is once per turn, you can target one other face-up card you control, destroy it. And if you do, you can set a Metaphor spell trap directly from your deck to your field. I'll jump a little bit ahead here and explain that F.A. Uh, plays a lot of different field spells, and all of those field spells have effects when they're destroyed by a card effect. Um, so the reason why we play Metaphors in F.A. is because we utilize these uh, Pendulum Scale effects to blow up our own F.A. field spells and generate really high amounts of advantage off of that, um, which is pretty cool. Bismagir also has a secondary effect, uh, her monster effect, I should say, where if she's destroyed by battle or card effect during the end phase of the turn, you can add a Metaphors monster from the deck to your hand. So triple copies of Bismagir, um, I feel, is a must. Then we're on two copies of Steelin, two copies of Silvered, and two copies of Gold Driver as our normal monster Metaphors. Uh, notice each one is one level higher than the previous, Steelin being a two, Silvered being a three, and uh, Gold Driver being a level four. Um, both Gold Driver and Silvered are low scales while Steelin's a high scale and they all share the same pendulum effect as Bismagir. Uh, just being able to target a face-up card um, I control, destroy it, and if I do set a metaphor spell trap uh, from your deck to the field which is pretty cool. Um, so again you want to play high amounts of metaphors monsters that way you can ensure that you are always drawing into a way to blow up your field spells. Um, we play one copy of Metaphors Volflame Again, as an additional high scale, and also being a level 7 monster with pretty decent stats that we can summon. It is a normal monster, but again, it does share the exact same pendulum scale effect as their other uh, Metaphors monsters we've shown off so far. Uh, we also play one copy of Parametaphors Melcaster, being a low scale level 7 monster, again with the exact same pendulum scale effect. However, her monster effect is kind of like a mirrored version of Bismagir, where if she is destroyed by battle or by card effect, you can target a face-up Metaphors uh, monster that's in your extra deck and add it to your hand. However, you cannot activate cards in the scale with the same name for the remainder of the turn. Um, so Melcaster is pretty cool, just as an additional level 7. And then for the last main deck Metaphors monster is one copy of Metaphors Vanisher. This card is probably the second best Metaphors main deck monster behind Bismagir in my opinion. Um, and that's actually because of his monster effect. Um, his pendulum effect differs from the other Metaphors monsters, and we actually don't even utilize it in this deck um, at all. We mainly just use the Vanisher for the monster effect, and that is, um, if he is special summoned by the effect of a Metaphors card, you can target a monster the opponent controls, or that they have in their graveyard, and banish it. That is extremely strong for being able to deal with stuff like, you know, Destiny Hero, Destroy Phoenix Enforcer that's running rampant in the format right now. Um, this is a very good out to that card. Um, he also has an additional effect where while this card's in your hand, you can tar uh, target two face-up cards you control, including a Metaphors card, destroy them both, and if you do, special summon this card from your hand. Uh, I will say that that effect does trigger his secondary effect to banish a monster on the opponent's field or grave, so that's pretty nice. He's also a 2900 beater, making him pretty formidable to summon out, um, which is pretty dope. Uh, but moving on, uh, we're going to be going into the only hand trap we play in the main deck, and that is triple copies of Cyframe Gear Gamma with the one copy of Cyframe Driver. Early on, I was testing with uh, Ghost Ogre in this format, but after testing the deck, I found that Ghost Ogre actually isn't as good as I thought it was going to be, so I decided to play Gamma instead. Um, Gamma is kind of slept on right now, and it's actually still really, really strong in this format. Um, it's also a Psychic Monster that's a tuner, which is pretty nice because, spoiler alert, we are playing Emergency Teleport in the deck, since I don't know if you noticed, but all the Metaphors monsters were Psychics, uh, so we do have some pretty cool E-Tele targets that we can put uh, for extenders on the board. Uh, but Triple Gamma 1 Driver is the only hand trap we, we decide to main deck. And then uh, moving on to some of our generic uh, cards, uh, monster-wise, we're playing one copy of Psychic Wheelitter, just as a generic tuner Psychic that we can summon off E-Tele or by its own effects. Uh, it's a pretty cool card overall. And then of course we're on the one copy of Mecha Phantom Beast Coltwing and the one copy of Despot 1 since we are playing the uh, Christian Haka Fibrax and Mecha Phantom Beast Aurora Don in our extra deck. Um, we need a Despot 1 and the Coltwing uh, to facilitate that combo. Um, but that's it for the monsters in the main deck. Let's move on to some of the uh, spells now, which we do actually play quite a bit of. 
Uh, so we're on one copy of FA Circuit Grand Prix. Uh, this is a field spell that um, grants uh, two additional levels to our FA monsters during the battle phase. And if an FA monster destroys an opponent's monster by battle, we get to draw a card. Uh, in addition to that, if Circuit Grand Prix is destroyed by a card effect, uh, we can actually add an FA card from the deck to our hand except a copy of itself. Uh, so again, this is kind of starting to all come full circle now. You can see that why we run the Metaphos Pendulum Monsters is because we use them to blow up our FA field spells, since all of them, when they're destroyed, let us add an FA card from the deck to our hand. Um, so we end up going plus two on the exchange when you think about it, since the Metaphos Monster allows us to also set a Metaphos spell trap from deck to field as well, in addition to that. So we generate some pretty cool advantage, and it definitely speeds the deck up overall in terms of consistency, which is nice. Um, but then we're on two copies of UA Hyper Stadium. Um, you're probably wondering why we're playing this, and that's actually because this card is always treated as an FA card, which is pretty cool. Uh, when it's activated, you get to add an FA monster from the deck to your hand, and then its secondary effect is you can reveal a field spell in your hand, pay 1,000 life points, and if you do, you can uh, get an additional normal summon of an FA monster in addition to your normal summoner set this turn. Uh, the only reason why we play two of this card and not three is for two reasons. First is that this is the only field spell in the theme that does not have an effect when it's destroyed by a card effect, which is kind of unfortunate. Second reason is that this is also the only field spell in the theme that has a hard once per turn on its activation. So if you draw multiples of this, it actually feels kind of bad because you can only activate one of them per turn anyway, and it doesn't generate you any advantage if you destroy it off of your scale effects. So I felt that maxing out on it at three felt a little bit bricky because there were times when you draw multiple and it just didn't feel very good. Um, you would kind of wish it was any other card. So I think playing two is the perfect number. Um, and again, you know, Auto Navigator on Summon can search any field spell from deck to hand. So it's not like, you know, we're having a hard time finding this card if we do need to see it. So just two of that. Uh, moving on, though, we're on two copies of Offroad Grand Prix. This one grants uh, our FA Monsters two levels during the main phase. And then if an opponent's monster destroys an FA Monster by battle, we get to discard a random card out of the opponent's hand. Um, it doesn't come up that often, but again... This, uh, the reason why we play this is because if this card is destroyed by a card effect, uh, we get to add an FA card from the deck to our hand except a copy of itself. Um, so again, we just generate really good amounts of advantage. And then for the last field spell that we play, we max out on triple copies of FA City Grand Prix. This, in my opinion, is hands down the best field spell FA has at its disposal. The reason for that is because it's almost like Off-Road Grand Prix and Circuit Grand Prix combined into one card. In the fact that City Grand Prix grants your FA Monsters two additional levels during the main phase and the battle phase. Also, in addition to that, it grants all FA Monsters targeting protection from the opponent's card effects. Um, so while the City Grand Prix is in the field zone, your opponent cannot target your FA Monsters with card effects. Which is pretty good protection, since there are a lot of effects that target now in this format. And then again, if this card is destroyed by a card effect you can add an FA card from the deck to your hand, except a copy of itself. So that's pretty much it for all the field spells that we play. I think that's a pretty good ratio overall between the Metaphors monsters we play and the field spells we run. You're pretty much every turn going to be popping field spells with, with your Metaphor scales, so that's what you want to definitely be doing in this deck. But moving on to the quick play spells, we're on uh, one copy of FA Pit Stop. Uh, the on-field effect is kind of lackluster. It just reduces an FA Monster's level by two, and then you draw one card. Um, it's not that great, in my opinion. Uh, where this card is actually a lot better is the Graveyard Effect, where, um, except the turn it was sent there, you can banish this card from Grave to target an FA Monster in your Graveyard and Special Summon it. So it's like an in archetype Monster Reborn, which is pretty nice. Uh, then we're on triple copies of FA Test Run. This card is probably one of my favorite cards in the deck overall. Um, what this card does is a quick play spell. You can target an FA monster you control, change its battle position, then you get to destroy one card on the field. The de destroying one card on the field does not target. So this is a quick effect, non-target destruction, which is pretty strong. And it, this, you can destroy a card on the field, which can even include your own cards, which is pretty cool. Um, so you can also use this to nuke your own field spells if you had to or to dodge like a targeting effect, for example. 
like if you normal summon auto navigator and the opponent tries to imperm you, you can chain test run to blow up your own auto nav. That way the imperm fizzles and the auto nav still gets to search, which is pretty nice. Um, but it has an additional effect as if it wasn't good enough already, where except the turn it was sent to grave, you can banish this card from the graveyard to target a face-up card you control, destroy it, and if you do, you can special summon an FA monster from your deck. That is extremely strong. Um, you can use this to pop scales, blow up field spells, and you generate crazy advantage off of this, especially on the following uh, follow-up turns. Uh, so Test Run is just overall really, really strong. Um, but now moving on to the Metaphil spells, which we only play two of. We're on one copy of Parametaphil's Fusion and one copy of Metaphil's Fusion. Uh, both of these fuse, obviously, into Metaphil's Fusion Monsters. Parametaphil's, though, allows you to not only use cards from your hand or field as material, but you can use up to one card from your face-up extra deck as material as well, which is pretty neat. And then Metaphil's Fusion is just your standard fusion spell you fuse using materials from hand or field. However, it has the added benefit of while it's in the graveyard, you can shuffle the Metaphil's Fusion back into your deck to draw one card, which is pretty strong. Um, so just one of each of those, because uh, you sh sh recycled them enough that you don't need to play more. Um, one copy of Painful Decision, just as a, an additional way to search for a Metaphil scale if we need it. This card allows us to Foolish Burial, a uh, level 4 or lower normal monster from deck to grave, and then add a monster with the same name from the deck to our hand. Um, since a lot of our Metaphil's monsters are our normal monsters, Painful Decision allows us to search whichever one we need for a given moment, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, then we're on the one copy of Ready Fusion. Um, this is actually pretty cool to, uh, I was testing with this and I liked it a lot. Uh, Metaphil's does have a pretty good target for this card, which we'll get into once we dive into the extra deck. Um, you can also substitute this card for one copy of Instant Fusion if you're looking for a more budget alternative. The only reason why I'm running Ready Fusion is because I actually just pulled a copy of it out of some Bursa Destiny packs that I picked up. Um, so I thought it was pretty good, but just allowing you to special summon a level 6 or lower non-effect fusion monster uh, from your extra deck is nice. Just using that as an extender or a stepping stone uh, to jumpstart your plays is pretty good. Uh, then we are on the one called by the grave. Again, just because we don't want hand traps messing up our combos. Uh, we are on the two copies of Emergency Teleport. Again, our Metaphil's monsters are all psychic. So e -Tele is just amazing. Again, as an additional extender, summoning out cards that we can use as Synchro Material, Link Material, Fusion Material. It's, it's pretty strong overall. Then, uh, for the last spell card we main deck, it's two copies of Super Polymerization. Uh, this card is just nuts. Uh, it's kind of ironic, though, because Super Poly is actually pretty bad to main deck this format because of how diverse the format actually is. There isn't any, like, end boards that are very easy to poly into unless you're playing a deck that, like, inherently likes main decking Super Poly. Like, if you're playing, like, Shadal Despia, for example. Um, outside of that, there, there isn't any end boards that are easily polyable with Super Poly. Um, but the nice thing is that Metaphils also has a really great uh, super poly target that we can use our opponent's monsters to fuse with, which again we'll, we'll explain a little more in detail once we jump into the extra deck, but two super poly to round out the spells. And then for the last three cards in the main deck, to round out a 50 card main deck in total, is triple copies of Metaphil's Counter, the only trap cards we play in the deck. Um, I decided to increase this to three copies instead of the previous two I was running, for the simple fact that there's a lot of targeted destruction going on in, in this format. And uh, because of that, that allows Metaphil's counter to shine. Uh, because whenever a card or cards we control is destroyed by battle or by card effect, we can special summon a Metaphil's monster directly out of our deck, which is pretty nice. And as an additional effect from the graveyard where we can banish this card from our grave to uh, add a Metaphil's monster that's face up in our extra deck back to our hand. So... That's it for the main deck. Again, we rounded off at 50 cards. It's actually the biggest th that the deck's ever been. But despite the increased card count, it hasn't been more consistent, I feel, in, in a while. Um, I really like how it's been playing at this ratio. So let's jump into the extra deck. Of course, we're on the one copy of Christian Quandax, just as a level 4 Synchro Tuner. We are on the one copy of Garden Rose Flora. Again, as a level 5 Synchro Tuner, with the added benefit of being able to use her effect to Quick Sync on the opponent's turn, and she can also pop a, a Field Spell to summon out a token to our side of the board. Again, triggering our FA Field Spell effects when they're destroyed, which is pretty nice. Then run the one copy of FA Dawn Dragster, 
being probably the best FA main uh, extra deck monster. It's a spell trap negate. It gains a level each time an FA spell trap or spell trap effect is activated. Um, it does piercing damage. It, 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 this card is, is actually really, really strong, especially in its own uh, deck. Because we can get this card to pretty insane amounts of attack. And we can also give it targeting protection with City Grand Prix, which is cool. Um, moving on, though, we're on the one copy of Cyber's Quantum Dragon. Just as another generic level 7 we can play. That also has a, a pretty good effect, being able to deal with monsters without targeting or destroying them. So this is a pretty good out for things like Dragoon. Or um, stuff like the uh, Black Luster Soldier Link monster. I'm trying to think what else. Uh, just, just anything, you know, that, that's usually a pain in the ass to get over. Quantum Dragon can deal with pretty easily um, with its effect. Being able, at the start of damage step, any card it battles, it just bounces it back to the hand. Um, so that, that's pretty cool. Uh, then we're on the one copy of Cyframe Mortal Omega, just as another generic level 8 that we can make. It's pretty strong, being able to rip cards out of the opponent's hand as well as also recycle cards that are banished back into our graveyard. So all of our like FA Pit Stops, FA Test Runs, or Metaphos Counters that we banish from Grave to use their Grave effects, we can put them back in the graveyard with Omega to reuse those cards over and over. So that's pretty good. Then as our other level 8, we're on one copy of Ignister Prominence, the Blasting Draco Slayer. This card is actually pretty easy to make in this deck, especially since we've increased our Metaphos Count. Um, we can sink into this card pretty easily, and this card has a really strong effect as well. Being able to destroy any card that's in the Pendulum Zone on either player's field. And then if we do that, we can also shuffle a card on the field back into the deck. Again, that does not target or destroy. So that's a really, really strong effect. All behind a 2850 attack body, which is pretty big. Uh, then run the one copy of FA Motorhome Transport. Um, not as powerful as FA Dawn Dragster. However, this card is actually a bit of a house. Um, it, as it, it gains 300 attack times this level, and then it gains a level each time an FA spell trap or spell trap effect is activated. Um, when it reaches a certain level, though, it cannot be destroyed by battle or by card effects, which is pretty relevant, especially when you consider that you can pair this with City Grand Prix to prevent him from being targeted as well, uh, which makes him pretty difficult to out at that point. Uh, by regular means. Um, so there are some points where like my opponent just can't deal with this card because they don't have a way to out it. Either because they've exhausted too many of their resources and I've summoned this like late game for example. Um, or they just don't main deck and out to it and have to like scoop and go to game two or three to side into something that would could deal with this. Um, but with that being said this card does get extremely big and it also gets pretty difficult for your opponent to out. So it's still pretty fun to play as a one of in the extra deck. It's also won me a few games um, just because of how difficult it is to remove sometimes. Uh, and then to round out the synchros, we are on one copy of Baronet de Fleur. I cannot understate this card. If you can afford it, buy it. Best level 10 synchro ever printed, hands down. Now, I do understand that it is very expensive, so if you are looking for a budget alternative, I would recommend uh, either Ruddy Rose Dragon, um, which again, it actually... It used to be cheap, but now it's actually doubled in price thanks to Sword Soul. Um, but it's still way cheaper than Baroness's. Or you could also unironically run the Sword Soul level 10 synchro, which is I think is floating around like the $2 mark, if I'm not mistaken. That's another generic level 10 synchro that's pretty easy to make in this deck, and that's also has a pretty decent effect. Um, so those are two budget alternatives if you can't afford the Baroness, but if you can afford Baroness, play it. It's way too strong not to run. Um, so that's it for the Synchro Monsters. Let's run into the Fusions now. We're on the one copy of Metaphos Automate. This is our ready fusion target um, for um, our Metaphos. Excuse me, <laughs> I'm losing my train of thought. Uh, but this is actually pretty cool, though, because we can summon it off ready fusion, but we can also super poly into this as well, because all it requires is a Metaphos monster plus any monster on the field with 2,500 or less attack. Um, that could also include Destiny Hero Destroy Phoenix Enforcer, which is pretty awesome. So one Adamante is nice. Then we're on two copies of Metaphos Mithrilium. This card is just nuts. I still can't understate how amazing this card is. She recycles your uh, Metaphos cards that are in the graveyard back into the deck, while also bouncing cards on the field back to the hand. And she can also float when she leaves the board um, into any Metaphos that's in the graveyard or face up on your extra deck. Insane card. 
Definitely don't underestimate it in this deck. It's it's put in so much work. And then for the last fusion we play is one copy of Metaphor's Crimsonite. This is our other super poly target we run because this card just requires one Metaphor's monster plus any two monsters with 3,000 or less attack. So now you can kind of see how powerful super poly becomes since we play such a generic fusion we can summon off of it. As long as we can put a Metaphor's monster on our field, we can take any two monsters the opponent has that have less than 3k attack and fuse them all away into this. It's a 3k, 3k vanilla, but it, hey, you've cleared a board potentially of some crazy negates, so it's still pretty strong nonetheless. Also, since it's level 9, if we have an auto navigator, for example, we can actually uh, then synchro summon into Baronet de Fleur, which is pretty cool. Um, but moving into the links, we're on the one copy of Link Haribo. This card is so powerful, I don't understand why I wasn't playing into the deck previously, but I'm so glad I am now. Very, very strong in the deck overall since you play so many level 1s. Uh, Link Rebo is just amazing. And then, of course, run the one copy of Christron Haka Fibrax, and then the one uh, Mecha Phantom Beast Aurora Don to round out the extra deck slot. Um, but that's it, guys. Let me know what you think. Um, actually, uh, before we wrap things up, let's run through the side deck briefly. Uh, the side deck is actually just a bunch of like going second cards and then cards that also help us deal with things like Imperial Order and Anti-Spell Fragrance specifically, since those cards hurt this deck pretty heavily. Um, so running into the side, we're on two copies of Trap Eater. This is actually a pretty spicy tech choice I'm testing. Um, it cannot be normal summoned or set. It must be special summoned by sending one face-up trap card the opponent controls to the graveyard. Um, and that's cost, so that's actually pretty crazy. Um, so you just like send any face of trap they control to grave to then special this from your hand, and it's a level four tuner monster. So I think that's pretty dope to be honest, and it definitely warrants uh, some testing for sure. Being able to out stuff like Imperial Order, um, anti spell fragrance, skill drain, for example, since like this activates in hand as well. Uh, but anyway, moving on, we're on triple copies of Lightning Storm again, just to help us for going second. Uh, triple Dark Ruler No More, uh, again, just to help us break boards. The third Super Poly in the side, just so when we know we're going second, uh, we can side it in and help us break boards even easier. Triple copies of Evenly Matched, again, for the same reason, just to help us with going second. And then for the last of our side deck card, we are running triple copies of Typhoon, just again to help us deal with stuff like Imperial Order and or anti-spell fragrance uh, specifically. Um, but that's it, guys. Let me know what you think. Um, I think FA Metaphors is actually a really, really strong rogue contender, and it can make some pretty cool plays. Um, stay tuned. I will be trying to put together a combo tutorial for this new version of the build, and I'll also be trying to set up a live duel video between this deck and the mutant profile that I uploaded not that long ago. So stay tuned for that. Um, but again, leave a like, Comment uh, below and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, thanks a lot, guys, and have a good evening.